So let's talk about equipment in the lab. And when I mean lab, I mean the chemistry lab and the chemical engineering lab. And chemical industry, industry mainly. This will be more about lab in the chemistry lab. So, well, first instance, storage facilities. How are you going to storage your materials in a chemical lab? For a chemistry lab, you will have plenty of glassware bottles maybe even you will have the safety bell which extracts the vapors and fumes it might even generate you can see also solids are in bottles and so on plastic bottles glass bottles and so on in well, let's say that in engineering we got very huge containers steel probably we have a lot of valves a lot of let's say inlets and outlets because we need to keep a lot of like pressure, temperature, levels and so on. As you can see here it's also huge. You have these stairs in order to have some engineers or maybe oper operation people going here and checking out the huge storage. And for distillation, hopefully you check this out when you were a student in maybe high school or before. You got this little thing, you burn it, well, this, you burn the Bunsen burner, it generates heat and starts evaporating this right here, it goes here, then we start cooling this so the vapor turns out as a liquid, it got here and you make your separation. Now that's for the distillation in a lab. Industrial distillation is made in distillation columns which are huge. And as you can see right here, every stage is different. We have no condensers here. We've got condensers down and sorry, up here and down here. And what I mean here is not literally up. Actually, we always say this in order to get an easier understanding. But the thing is that we're going to have a pipe. Go it, it goes through here and then goes back. Evaporation, as the name implies, is an operation that will evaporate or this liquid right here. You got this Benson burner and this is going to go out. In industrial applications, we have huge evaporators. As you can see, we have a very hot fluid right here and we get our fluid in tubes. So they start exchanging heat and they turn into vapor and then eventually you take it out. Chemical reactions, well, in the labs, you are not going to have that fancy reactors. You may even have reactions in beakers. You have A and B, then you produce C and D, or this right here, which is not that safe. Actually, I just took it because it's awesome right here, but I'm very sure this is not safe, at least not if you are not in the extraction bed. Now, for engineers, you will see, of course, a lot of inlets, outlets, for the materials, you will have a manhole right here, so someone is able to go inside and clean or check out. You got this steel, very huge. You got your steerer because here, well, you might be able to use this little, let's say, uh, I forgot the name in English, but this stick. You just move it and you will favor agitation. In the industrial reactor, you cannot do that. It's a lot of energy you will require, so Imagine having a human turning this like a donkey. Well, it's too much energy. And as you can see, we got plenty of security issues, pipes, uh, inlets, outlets, and so on, because we many times want to control temperature and pressure, which is very difficult to control in these type of reactors. Now we go for mixing and agitation. As I told you guys, we are not going to have someone mixing it. We're going to have this machine. It moves and it, as it moves, it's going to mix all this stuff right here. There are plenty of different patterns for its agitation. So you can see here, this is like a helix. This is a more structure agitation system. And the reality is that if you're at the lab, you will have this little, uh, let's say spoon right here, or if it's a little bit larger, you will have your mixing flask right here. You just close it with this cork and you can move it and you will mix it. Or if you're heating, well, you will want 
well you want to avoid to get burned so you just have this little guy right here which agitates with magnetic fields right here so you are having agitation and heat transfer now heating in general well we use Benson burner or this little plate right here or maybe even an oven or stove right here in the industrial application we got these beautiful heat exchangers so one fluid goes inside the exchanger, another fluid goes outside the exchangers. So what you have is essentially one fluid starts heating up the tube and the cold fluid starts cooling down the tube. So there's heat exchange. One goes in, one goes out. Liquid, liquid extraction. Well, it's pretty easy this typical lab experiment. You have this layer and this second layer. This is A, this is B, and this is C. And you will separate it very easily into a beaker opening and closing this. For a industrial liquid liquid extraction, well, you require a little bit more complex equipment. And we have these systems which are called washing. It helps to increase and decrease the concentrations in the liquid liquid extraction. Now pumping, we've got huge pumps for industrial applications, huge systems for compression and pumping. And in the lab, we got just little pumps which will generate vacuum or little pumps that increase pressure or these pumps right here that will favor flow of liquids. And finally, well, I could compare much more equipment, but I think you're getting the idea of how this is very industrial for the chemical engineer. This is very lab as chemist. So the piping, you will have these hoses right here going here, these are plastic or maybe PVC and here right, we use steel because steel is cheap and strong and sometimes it's hard to corrode so you can see plenty of piping right here well that's the main difference, we use huge pipes and we use insulation material typically at the lab we don't use that and yeah that's what I wanted to mainly show you guys left side chemistry lab right side industrial applications so that was everything guys hopefully you start to get the idea of where you want to work <laughs>